over a hundred elements, almost none of which is ever found in a pure state. Everything about us, the earth, the sea, and the sky is constantly being formed and reformed in a never-ending state of change, a ceaseless flow of flux and form. We have, however, learned to extract, purify, and combine these elements and to use them for own purposes. This is the story of man's use of lead, one of the basic elements in the matrix that binds our civilization together. Crude ore drilled in the earth, blasted, loaded and hauled. and ground. Suspended and separated. concentrated and recovered. Centered and smelted. Refined, purified, and poured into ingots. All necessary in order to convert perhaps two tons of ore into this hundred pound pig of lead. Deposits of lead are here, a major portion of which comes from the North American continent. In addition to the lead which is mined, well over a million tons are reclaimed each year with constant exploration disclosing new reserves for tomorrow's expanding requirements. 
This is the symbol which the ancients used for lead. It was also their sign for Saturn, father of the gods, an indication that lead is one of the oldest substances used by man. To the modern scientist, lead is PB, from the Latin word plumbum. Lead is heavy, with an atomic weight of 207.21 and a specific gravity of 11.3, in between copper and gold. Lead will literally last for centuries. Its natural color is silvery, but exposure to the elements results in an attractive gray patina. For a metal, lead is soft. Because of this characteristic, it is one of the easiest of all metals to process, to melt or alloy, cast, roll, extrude, or drop to form shot. One of the highest density materials known to man Lead is an effective barrier against the transmission of sound, vibration, gamma rays, and x-rays, providing optimum results per pound for every dollar expended, resulting in the broad acceptance of lead as a protector of products and of people in hospital x-ray rooms, in doctors and dentists' offices, and industrial radiographic installations. In atomic shielding, one of the many lead shapes, interlocking lead bricks, which can easily be rearranged, are used. Leaded rubber or plastic gloves and aprons are also familiar protective devices. along with lead-lined plywood and cinder blocks, lead glass windows, and lead personnel shields on portable access and material handling equipment. Lead shipping containers of all sizes are used for the safe transportation of radioactive isotopes and fissionable material. The Savannah, first atomic-powered merchant ship, has more than 530 tons of lead built in at vital areas to shield personnel from her reactor. Lead's complete resistance to moisture has helped to establish this metal as an ideal sheathing material for telephone and power cables. This ingenious modern press can extrude seamless lead sheathing to protect cable up to several hundred thousand volt capacity. Such cables must be flexible in order to bend around corners and so they can be pulled through underground ducts. Individual sections of cable are easily joined with solder wiped lead sleeves. A vital aid in the transmission of electric power, lead is also a prime ingredient in portable electric power storage batteries. Over a hundred years ago, Planté discovered that electrodes made from two different forms of lead when suspended in an acid solution outlasted and outperformed the earlier galvanic batteries. Today, lead acid batteries come in all sizes. Huge units supplying thousands of amps, others so small that they can only be filled with a medicine dropper. Back in the pioneer days of the automobile industry, battery-powered cars were serious competition to internal combustion. And today, battery-powered vehicles are again attracting serious interest. Their maintenance and operating costs are lower, and their useful life is practically unlimited. United Parcel Service is operating 40 electric trucks more than 30 years old. 
battery-powered electric motors operate the new silent lawnmowers, which start at a flick of a switch. In battery-operated hand tools, in golf carts of various design, increasing your enjoyment of the sport. And in outboard motors for silent trolling in your favorite fishing grounds. Foremen and maintenance men in many large industrial operations use electric carrier carts to save time in in-plant transportation. And industrial lift trucks, powered by battery, have established economy records for long life and virtual indestructibility. Batteries have, of course, been used for years as emergency standby power for hospitals, schools, telephone companies, fire and burglar alarm systems. In its architectural applications, lead invariably plays an essential role, although it may not be so obvious to the casual observer. Lead pipe is used to conduct water from the cast iron water mains to the house. Inside the house, lead pipe is used for waste, for traps beneath showers and tubs, for bends under water closets, and sometimes as vent pipes. All unseen but essential to the function of your gleaming fixtures. Lead is also essential for caulking cast iron water mains, soil pipe, and vent pipe. Outside the structure, lead sees considerable service as roofing, flashing, and gutter lining material. Here, its important advantages are its pleasing patina and its resistance to corrosion. Furthermore, runoff waters from lead installations will not stain white paint, marble, or other adjacent materials. Recently, our cities have become so noisy that many architects are now specifying lead in conjunction with other conventional building materials to control sound in office buildings. With a constantly rising cost per square foot of office space, lead's ability to deaden sound effectively, even in a very thin sheet, has great economic importance. A thin partition panel embodying lead can be as effective as a panel two or three times as thick made of conventional materials. We can demonstrate lead's acoustical limpness with this sound box, made of lead only one-eighth of an inch thick. Hear for yourself how effectively this small an amount of lead can control sound. Again, let your ear be the judge. The practical applications of these demonstrations are all about you. In the air, the sound of jet power without is reduced to comfortable cabin quiet within by the use of lead neoprene barriers. On the water, the roar of gas turbine engines without is barred from the passenger compartment by leaded vinyl for comfort and quiet. And on land, whether the problem be the reduction of transformer noise, the soundproofing of valuable office space with a lower install cost, the provision of soundproof movable walls, or a single soundproof room, pound for pound, there is no more effective sound barrier than lead. Lead is equally effective as a vibration isolator in machinery installations.
can to protect against the vibration of heavy vehicular traffic or the rumbling of trains. For half a century, such vibration problems have been solved by the use of lead asbestos pads. Installed between the footings and the base plates which support the steel framework. More recently, similar pads have been used between the columns and footings in concrete frame buildings. Because of such lead pads, concerts at the New York Philharmonic are not disturbed by subway vibrations. And 60 tons of lead pads also protect the Pan Am building from the vibrations of railway and subway lines beneath it. In the construction of stained glass windows, the modern craftsman creates the ultimate aesthetic fusion of sunlight, color, and glass, using lead as the essential functional and decorative element which binds them all together separating and supporting the individual glass panes, unobtrusively showcasing the beauty of the window, or boldly asserting itself as the major decorative and storytelling element. Up to this point, we have referred to lead as the metal, but through modern technological research, lead has found a new life, a new profile, and many new forms. In this process of change, it has become more important than ever before. The automobile has come a long way since this 1902 locomobile. By 1940, the typical family car not only looked a bit more comfortable, but also boasted an engine with a powerful compression ratio of five to one. Today's models have more than doubled this ratio and will yield approximately 50% more miles per gallon at 40 miles per hour. What is responsible for this power revolution? One of the factors is certainly lead. Not the dull gray metal, but this heavy colorless liquid known as TEL, tetraethyl lead. There is approximately this much in each gallon of high test gasoline in your car. Without tetraethyl lead, the cost of operating high compression engines would be prohibitive. With TEL, our transportation system can move ahead with lead. Another important form of lead's new profile is its many valuable oxides, most of which are formed by agitating molten lead oxygenated air and then grinding the flaky product into powder. Litharge, or lead monoxide, is the most widely used lead oxide and is one of the most important of all metal chemical compounds. Red lead, lead chromate, lead silicate, and other compounds are also widely used today, but we are usually unaware of the contributions they make to our industrial economy. This goblet of lead crystal was made in England by George Ravenscroft back in the year 1675. Today, the inheritors of this great tradition are to be found working in our modern ceramics industry. These products are made with lead oxide because of its low melting temperature, its flux characteristics, the high index of refraction which lead gives to glass, and the fact that it adds brilliance to clear glass. Lead glass is ideal for technical purposes because of its high density, high electrical resistance, and ease of manipulation. This is why most light bulbs contain some lead glass, and why all neon tubing is made of this material. Beauty in architecture is enhanced by porcelain enameled surfaces over aluminum. Leaded enamels are a critical ingredient of these surfaces. Glazed brick, also lead-related, is another important building material in both the construction and aesthetic sense. Wide range of color and low maintenance are two important features. An imaginative use of lead in modern architectural design, this reflecting pool, 150 feet long and 40 feet wide, lends grace and interest to its parent structure. Conforming easily to any desired shape, and with lasting leak-proof qualities, 
lead recommends itself to modern designers for pools, fountains, and planters. Lead pigments in paint save all of us millions of dollars every year. Red lead and other rust-inhibiting lead pigments in metal protective paints. Yellow highway paint containing lead chromates. White lead and lead silicates for exterior house paint. Lead compounds are also key ingredients in stabilized plastics of all kinds, from electrical insulation to vinyl tile. Lead's region and the ease with which it can be worked and joined have made it the ideal material in chemical manufacturing equipment. For tanks, vessels, piping, and processing chambers of all sizes. In spite of all this broad utility, Lead is today at the very threshold of many exciting new applications, stimulated by product development and the continuation of lead research. In solid state physics, it is possible to generate electric power from a heat differential using no moving parts. In functional terms, this generator is in between a transistor and a thermocouple. Using such a lead telluride generator as its power source, is the transit satellite launched by the United States as a navigational aid. This modern car utilizes lead by way of ferrite and ceramic magnets, from its windshield wipers to its directional fin lights. The modern way to carve demands lead. as does the newest way of brushing your teeth. Another fascinating development uses lead zirconate titanate crystals. These ceramic crystals produce electric current when they are stressed mechanically. Already in the development stage are uses such as replacing the ignition system of internal combustion engines. A lifetime strobe light operated by hand pressure alone. In lawnmowers, outboard motors, air conditioning units. Piezoelectricity is actually in use today in industrial ultrasonic cleaning tanks. The piezoelectric unit converts electricity to high frequency vibration which cleans the surfaces and destroys microscopic life. Intriguing as these applications are, Lead is best known to most of us as solder. In the form of the printed circuit, solder has made possible the entire field of miniaturization. The transistorized radio, TV set, and even the airborne computer. In the high-speed production of modern containers, lead makes a major contribution. Like the very planet on which we live, lead is indeed a paradox. It is used in batteries and for piezoelectricity because it is electrically active. But it is used for light bulbs and insulator glazes because it is electrically inactive. Lead itself seems lifeless, but TEL in gasoline adds a new spark of life to our auto engines. Lead is exceedingly dense, with no suggestion of transparency, yet leaded glass is the most crystal clear of all. We customarily think of metallic lead as dull in color, but its compounds appear in every brilliant hue. Lead deadens sound and is widely used for soundproofing. Yet, lead crystal glass has a bright ping, which is in fact its trademark. So, because its contribution is so often unseen, it is difficult to paint a true picture of lead. But lead is all around us, all the time. In the glasses through which we now see. In the production of the printed materials we read. In the lens through which these images are projected. In the projector bulb which lights this film. And even on the screen, adding brilliance to the picture itself. Wherever we turn our eyes or ears, lead is there, giving light power, silence,
color, protection of life itself, and in the form of solder, binding our other metals together, forming the very matrix of our industrial society.